Hello students, hope you all are fine. Welcome to another lecture of microbial genetics. You are listening to your very favorite Dr. Shondi Panshain Gupto, who is an assistant professor in microbiology. So, so I am back over here with another lecture of microbial genetics. In our previous classes and lectures, we have been discussing all about mutation, its subtypes, different forms of mutation, and about many more interesting things about that is related to mutation. We have discussed about spontaneous and induced mutations, about the most prevalent mechanisms, about many of the most of some of the, that is the prominent of the most uh, that is uh, make a prominent of the most relevant mechanisms which are known to generate spontaneous mutations like frame shifts, DNA lesions, base pair substitutions, etc. Then we have discussed also about induced mutation, about well going through the agents in which are known to induce mutations like the chemicals which include alkylating agents, base analogs, then uh, agents modifying the DNA bases like nitrous acid and hydroxylamine, uh, amine, about the physical agents like ionizing and non-ionizing radiations. The ionizing radiations are the radiations of high, higher energy and lesser wavelength like cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays and non-ionizing radiation is the low and lower energy and uh, higher wavelength UV radiation which generates pyrimidine timing that is pyrimidine dimers, particularly called thymine dimers, forming a cyclobutyl ring. So, hope all these fundamental aspects are the basic principles. That is, the, the fundamental aspects of mutation, of spontaneous and induced mutations, are very well known to you and clear to you. So, we have all been discussing about different subtypes, interesting subtypes of mutation occurring at the protein translational level which affect the minors have been coded like silent mutation, missense mutation, nonsense mutation. Then next to that we have discussed about the mutations occurring at the DNA level which, which do affect the expression of gene like base transition, transversion that is base pair substitution mutations and of course about many more things. Now let us move on to next topic of our discussion. My today's topic of discussion is having a huge relevance and significance in the field of applied genetics. It is all about reversion and suppression. So today I'll be getting into the details of the molecular mechanisms involved in reversion and suppression mutations. After listening to this talk, you'll be able to answer what do you mean by suppression and reversion mutations, what are the different subtypes of suppression and reversion mutations, and what are the uses of revertence and what are the uses of suppressants, that is reversion and suppression in genetics. What are the applications of reversion and supp suppression in the field of microbial genetics? Now let's begin our discussion with a form of mutation called reversion. Now when as a result of mutation a wild type strain is that is converted into a mutant it is usually called a as a forward mutation. Hope it's quite well known to you that as a result of mutation the parent type called the plutotroph is mutated to a mutant form called an oxotroph and such a mutation is known as forward mutation. Now next to forward mutation when a back or a reverse of the forward mutation occurs and reverses the mutant back to the original phenotype or to the original genotype, such a mutation, back mutation, is known as reversion. So what do you mean by reversion? Reversion is actually a second form of mutation which a mutant experiences and as a result of which it reverts back to the wild type in terms of its genotype and phenotype. So such a back mutation which a mutant experiences and reverts back to wild type is known as reversion. Now, very interestingly, there are two different subtypes of reversion and hence there are two classes of revertence, true revertence and it 
be valid reversions, depending upon the mechanism or the molecular mechanism involved in reversion. The revertants can be grouped, and the way the revertants are generated, we can group them into two classes, true revertants and uh, equivalent revertants. So what are true revertants? Then, as a result of back mutation, a mutant is reverted back to its Y type, and the nucleotide sequence of the mutant is converted back to Y type, or the, not only the phenotype, but the genotype of the Y type, as a result of back mutation or reversion, is also restored. Such a reversion is known as true reversion. Now, I'll, um, I'll make, more, make it more clear for you all by considering an example. Let us take an example. Now, let us say uh, a, the, the again occurs a reversion in, um, a, in a good on of mRNA, which calls for amino acid, that is lysine. Now, let us say that then uh, that is a good on AAA of mRNA, which calls for lysine experiences a mutation. As a result of mutation, the Pidon is converted to UA to GAA to GAA mRNA codon which code for which, which codes for glutamic acid. So this is a forward mutation. Now the mutant that is GAA experiences a reversion or a back mutation and is converted back again to AAA which codes for lysine. Thus what happens? What is the result of such a back mutation or reversion? The result is that the mutant GAA is reverted back to the Y type both in terms of its genotype that is AAA and phenotype that is amino acid which holds the encoded amino acid lysine. So such a rebum that is a mutation reverse reversion of that mutation is actually called as a true reversion. Now what do we mean by an equivalent reversion? Another interesting subtype of reversion or form of reversion is an equivalent reversion in which a mutant experiences a back mutation or a reversion and reverts back to the wild type but only the phenotype or the phenotypic or external expression of the wild type and uh, hence the encoded amino acid is restored but the genotype is no more restored or the codon of the mRNA is not restored. Now this can be explained by considering a very simple example. Now let us say that uh, G UCC, uh, that is take the example of codon, mutation in mRNA codon GCC, which actually codes for amino acid, UCC, sorry, which actually codes for amino acid, that is lysine. In course of forward mutation, it's mutated to another mRNA codon, that is uh, UGC, which, which encodes for amino acid, that is uh, serine. Now, as a result of Sorry, you CC codes for amino acid cysteine and as a result of forward mutation it's converted into an uh, codon which codes for amino acid that is serine. How, and now next to this the mutant experiences a back mutation as a result of which it's converted to a codon called a codon or a synonymous codon which codes for the amino acid the same amino acid or the wild type amino acid but the genome type of the wild type is not restored. That is UCC as a result of forward mutation is converted to UGC and UGC as a result of reversion mutation is converted to AGC which codes for the same amino acid that is serine to which which was being coded by the first ketone that is U that is uh, UCC. So such a mutation is known as equivalent reversion of that mutation is known as equivalent reversion. So what is equi what is the effect of equivalent reversion? A mutant experiences a back mutation in the form of equivalent reversion as a result of which the mutant reverts back to the Y type but only in terms of its phenotype but not in terms of genotype. The genotype is not restored and the the codon of the amino acid changes and the uh, that is the
the aminer encoded amino acid remains the same, but it is being encoded by a synonymous ketone. That is, and we all know that synonymous ketones are a group of ketones which code for the same amino acid. That is, as a result of reversion or back mutation, the uh, synonymous ketone is generated, which encodes for the same or the wild type amino acid, but the genotype or the mRNA codon sequence of the codon is not restored. So such a reversion is known as equivalent reversion. Now, at this part of uh, my lecture, I leave a very interesting activity for you all. Just uh, uh, keep on thinking about the interesting, that is, what might be the role of reversion. Just uh, this is an activity. I'll, I'm going for a very short break. I'll resume that after break. Then, within that, during that, just think about the role of reversion. What is the role or application of reversion in genetics? I'm returning back. I'll resume back after the break very shortly with an answer to this question.